What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Retro of Aviation. Hope you guys have a fantastic day today and today I have a very exciting video for you guys. Today I have a fleet by type on my Boeing 787 Dreamliner collection that I'm super excited to share with you guys. We have 17 Boeing 787s here to assess and they all look fantastic and I'm super excited to make this video for you guys today. I want to give a huge shout out to Dreamliner Fan 2016 ironically for suggesting today's video. If you guys want to see a uh, fleet by type video please let me know in the comment section whether it's an airline or an aircraft like the 787 or an airline like American Airlines for instance because I'd be happy to do it as I'm really excited to knock out these really particular sections of my collection as we get an even better understanding for what kind of models that we have in the fleet and really take a various look at some of these manufacturers the molds and the qualities of these models and all kinds of things like that so I'm really excited for this and I hope you guys are as well so let's get started so we currently have 17 Boeing 787s like I was referencing earlier I believe I have four 787-8s 12 Boeing 787-9s and one Boeing 787-10 these are all fantastic looking aircraft and I'm really excited to take a look at these and I'll also have more 787s coming in the future so perhaps we'll do another follow-up video to this in the future but nevertheless let's get started. We're going to start over here with the four Boeing 787-8s. A recent addition, probably the most recent Dreamliner addition to my collection is the Royal Jordanian Boeing 787-8. This is my first non-American airline 787-8 and it's a really nice aircraft as you guys can see from the detail of the livery and all of the mold infrastructure. This is a Gemini just released from 2021 from that really good April release and I'm really glad to have this aircraft. Uh, I chose to get this aircraft because I got to see it in Chicago various times, and it's a really special aircraft for that reason to me, so I thought it would be a really good one to add to my collection. And personally, I'm so glad to have a Royal Jordanian aircraft in general. It's a really pretty aircraft. I'm glad to have this one. So a really nice job right here by Gemini Jets for casting this one. It looks fantastic. The next 787s you're going to find in my fleet is the American Airlines Boeing 787-8 from 2015. I've had this aircraft for quite some time now and I'm really glad to have it. Ironic story here, I actually only got one to start with my collection, which is kind of funny, and I ended up getting the second one Ooh, probably 2017 or 18 time kind of time. I can't remember exactly when I got it, but I'm very glad to have this one. Taking a look at this aircraft, it's a really pretty aircraft with some really good detail in it. Gemini Jets did a really good job back in the time. This is what the 77-8 mold looked like before they went over to the JC Wing one like that one. And while it's not the prettiest mold, it's still a pretty solid one, and I'm definitely glad to have an iteration of it in my clutch with this American Airlines variant. Really glad to have this one, and it looks fantastic. So like I said, we have two of those, and the NG Models version will be coming in soon, so I might consider selling one those we'll see the other American Airlines Boeing 787-8 I currently have is the Gemini 2020 release from the August set. This is another fantastic model. It's a really nice effort right here. There are some uh, differences, and I believe I did a mold, or model comparison a couple years back on the uh, 787-9s that Gemini has done, but I don't think I did the 8s. I might have, though. I can't remember. But nevertheless, this is still a nice aircraft from the livery to the Wi-Fi box edition to this aircraft. It's a really nice one. Also, the tinted cockpit windows is another solid difference along with the tail uh, color. So it's still a really cool one and I'm very glad to have it in my collection. So the 77-8 fleet is quite nice and I'll definitely take it on any day of the week. I want to see if I can get it off that zoom mode because it's kind of annoying. All right, perfect. Well, of course it auto defaults that, come on. The struggle of filming, what can I say? Please, okay, perfect. Next in line, we're going to have our 12 Boeing 77-9s. We'll begin right here with this American Airlines variant right here. This is the 2017 release. I'm forgetting what month this came out in, but I'm very glad to have this American Airlines Boeing 77-9 from 2017. I have two of these aircraft, and they're really nice, as you guys can see from the detail of the fuselage, the casting, and the mold. It's a pretty nice one. I'm very glad to have it. I really hope to get the NG Models version at some point or a re-release of that one because it's a really nice aircraft, and it would be great to add for my collection because while these are nice, I would still like to have some different iterations so glad to have that one and i got both of them at the same time so you're going to find that one as well over here in the far back we're going to have the 2000 uh yeah it was a 2020 release i think from october maybe uh forgetting off the top of my head but i was initially only going to get one of these after seeing the 77-8 livery color which is just a personal preference it's nothing gets gemini just a personal preference but after seeing the model pictures come out i ended up getting two which i thought was a really good decision at the time considering that american still has i think like 20 of these on order and i'm really glad i chose to get two of these so we currently have two more of these making four total 77-9s and they've been very helpful for the dallas model airport particularly i very much hope to see the engine one like i said a re-release would be fantastic even though you know some people don't want to see it but it would still be cool like 737 so i'm not complaining too much though when the time comes it comes and maybe gemini will do it again with the newer mold but hopefully they don't do the color like they did on triple seven although that's not a bad model again just a personal preference so we have two bone 77-9s for american airlines 
One of my favorite models in the collection is the Niner Lines Boeing 787-9. This is an NG model released from May of 2020, and I'm very glad to have it. It may have been June, it was somewhere in there, but this is a fantastic model. Actually, this was a surprise model that Prairie Diecast threw in uh, on their website. They had the surprise model element. And I'm really glad that it was this one because this is a really cool one. As you guys can see, it has some incredible detail from the infrastructure, the cockpit windows to also the Wi-Fi box. You also have the beautiful engines right there too and also the tail uh, epinage session. It's a really cool model and I'm very glad to have it. Sorry, I'm just trying to get that camera to fix up. There we go. Really cool plane. I'm very glad to have it. Also, my model has faded a little bit. Uh, that was mainly because of a little too much sunlight exposure, which I'll take the blame on that. It's not horrible, but it's definitely noticeable. And again, it's not from NG model's fault. It was, I left it out too many times. So I thought I didn't do that bad of a job on it. I thought it would be more like the Japan, but anyways, it's all right and it happens. Another model that seems some similar fate, but not quite as bad. This one seems a little bit better is the Air Canada Bone 787-9. This is a really cool model. Also that NG models did. Now this is their first iteration of this aircraft. Oh boy, this probably came out in 2019, maybe that August release, I'm thinking that's when it was, but it's a really cool aircraft in general. It's a really nice one from the detail of delivery and the mold is just really nice. No Wi-Fi box ironically, which is quite kind of interesting for NG. I don't know if these have in real life. I would think they do, but not completely sure. But this was another aircraft for a Prairie Diecast video, so I'm glad to have this one. And it's a great addition for my collection. It's been an awesome use at the Great Plains Model Airport and I'm excited to see how I can utilize it in the future. It's a cool plane. Another aircraft that was picked up for a particular project is the TUI Boeing 787-9. This was picked up for the Sandel Cabin Model Airport project a couple of years ago, uh, and I really hope to get to utilize it for that project in the near future as I look to get that started very soon, hopefully on my next uh, break from school. This is a really cool aircraft, as you guys can see, it has some phenomenal detail, again, from just the simple cockpit windows to also the fuselage. I'm gonna try to get this stupid camera mode to fix, but it's a really nice aircraft, and I'm very glad to have this one. Really good model, and I'd highly recommend it if you're looking for a TUI aircraft in general. So really nice one, I'm very glad to have that to say the least. The last one for this row is a newer edition as well. This is my Turkish Boeing 787-9. Really glad to have this aircraft. This is a beautiful one. Uh, the livery is super nice. And obviously this was purchased for the Dallas Model Airport and also to add a Tur Turkish airplane into my collection, which has been a really good addition. Very glad to have this one. Also, I don't know why, but the tip of the wing, let me see if I can get a better perspective on it. Um, it was that side. The tip of the wing got damaged at some point. I don't know if you guys can see, but it kind of bent up there a little bit on the very edge. I don't know exactly what happened with that, but it was sure unfortunate. So I'm still very glad to have it though. And it's a fantastic model. This is also with that JC Wings mold that Gemini Jets has been utilizing and it slaps. It's really nice. So I'm really glad to have that one. And that one's fantastic. The last row encompasses some of the best models in the 77-9 uh, collection, I would argue. This is the A8 R2D2 77-9 at NG Models in 2020. And this is for sure one of the best models in my entire collection. This is just flat out amazing for a variety of reasons. You guys can obviously the R2D2 printing there on the front. The printing quality of the livery is fantastic and you just really see all the details from those, what seem to be like piano tiles up there on the top by the antenna to the Wi-Fi box outline. It's a super cool aircraft and I'm so glad to get to represent on the pond airways at my uh, Great Plains Model Airport and also in my collection. It's a really cool asset and it's a very, very neat plane. Uh, my Star Wars fleet's been building up pretty nicely lately as I have this one, I have the United uh, 737, I have the Alaska 737 coming soon. Uh, I hope to get some additional Star Wars aircraft. The 777 for on the pond would be cool, but probably not one that would be my budget, unfortunately. But long story short, there's a variety of really cool aircraft and I'm very glad to have this one in my collection. One that I wanted for several years that I finally was able to get uh, the last year was the Japan Airlines Boeing 787-9. This has been a regular visitor at the Dallas-Fort Worth Airport for several years at this point. I think they've been flying these here since like 2015 or 16. And I'm really glad that I finally got an opportunity to get one from NG Models. The uh, Phoenix version was very hard to find and there's a Phoenix model off to our right ironically. So I'm glad that I finally was able to find one and get this Japan Airlines aircraft. I'm really glad to have this one. So it's a really beautiful plane. Highly recommend getting it if you would like a JAL aircraft. And again, to represent Japan Airlines in this way, my collection has been really cool. Another airline from Asia that I'm representing really well with the 787 is the Korean Air 787-9 from Phoenix Models. This is my only Phoenix 787, which is pretty interesting, but it's a really cool aircraft. This is pretty similar to the Gemini Jet's first mold. Uh, it's a good aircraft. I actually bought this aircraft from Aviation Blue Tech, ironically, so that's a really cool fun fact about this aircraft. Uh, now, I wish that NG would do a Korean 787, but this one's sufficient. Uh, it's a nice aircraft. It's a really pretty livery, and I'm very glad to have this one. This is obviously kind of the uh, successor to, yeah, I'm pretty sure successor is the proper term. It might be predecessor, but I think it's successor to the 777 flights at Dallas. So I guess we're just now 787 predominantly, but 
yeah, it's been a great addition to the uh, fleet. And I'm very glad to have Korean in my collection. Qantas Boeing 77-9 is also a successor for the Dallas Model Airport to the A380, unfortunately, at least for the moment. This has been very valuable for the Sydney and now Melbourne services, so I'm really glad to see that. This is a really pretty aircraft. It has a variety of fantastic detail on it, as you guys can see, from the quality of the mold to the uh, kangaroo on the tail. This is also one of NG's few non-branded models. Uh, I think they called it like, uh, Gemini's were white box. I'm not sure what they called the NG ones that were non uh Branded, but this aircraft came non-branded, so they don't want Qantas to see it, obviously. That's why it was non-branded, but they did a fantastic job on it. It looks fantastic, so I'm so glad to have it. The Gemini Jets one is also really nice. It's pretty similar to something like this, so if you're looking for one, highly recommend getting that Gemini if you can find it, or the NG. My last aircraft for my Dreamliner collection is the British Airways 77-10. This is my only Dash 10 in the collection, and it's a really nice one. This is the Gemini Jets release from 2020. I'm very glad to have it as it's been an awesome addition for the Dallas Model Airport, despite them being more inconsistent than the United's mainline on that heavy service. It's still been a really cool model, and it's been a great addition as I have this one, I have the 747, I have the A350, and I also have the A380 and a Concorde. So definitely looking to expand my British Airways collection even more, but this was a great way to do it back in 2020. It's a really nice aircraft. Uh, the Gemini Jets mold, uh, this was one of the first examples they used the JC Wings one on, and obviously it looks fantastic with no wing flex or anything. Unfortunately, I got that aircraft pretty uh, damaged in the past, but luckily I was able to get a replacement, and that is where we have this one now. It's a really cool fleet of 787s. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. It's a fantastic uh, assortment of aircraft. I'm really glad to have it in my, um, just the whole uh, one to four hundred scale collection because obviously there are so many other aircraft that I have to orientate to for model airports and just personal preferences and whatnot. So I'm really glad that this has developed tremendously over the last two years, especially because like I said, didn't have that one, uh, didn't have two of these, didn't have that, all those and yeah, I didn't have any of those. So really the only 787s I had for a really long time were these two and these two. So literally I have like three, 400% of the 787 fleet and it's been really cool to watch. So I'm sure I have some more on order in the absolutely unbelievably tall stack of boxes over there and the more to come. Uh, I'm not sure though, but hey, I love the 77s. It's been a great buildup for Dallas and the two are uh, yeah, kind of three additional aircraft I have in the fleet. So that's really cool. Uh, interesting segment and a really cool one that we'll be doing here in this video is we're actually going to take it to the iPad and look at 10 fun facts at the 77 thanks to this website, uh, Aversheim. Alrighty, so we have really cool facts. Here's one. I'll just uh, kind of briefly uh, summarize them. Uh, so the 77 was actually going to be called the 7E7 uh, and it was stood for efficiency because as you guys know the Dreamliner is super efficient but they actually kept it 787 to uh, keep it consistent with the other aircraft that Boeing has so I think that was a good choice because 7E7 would have been kind of weird but that's kind of what's going on with that so that's a pretty cool fact. Uh, two, that depending on the configuration, it can sell for approximately $146 to $200 million. This is a ton of money in infrastructure for airlines, so I hope you guys understand how expensive that is. That's not chuck change by any means for an airline to be able to pay that off is very, very, very expensive. So these aircraft are some of the most high dollar in the uh, uh, the market in general, simply because of the efficiency of these aircraft, also the range and the infrastructure, the engines, the tinted windows, and all those uh, all the uh, options decked out on these aircraft, super expensive, but that's what the airlines want. So you gotta see it. Uh, the next one is 2.3 million parts have been supplied all over the world. That is crazy to think about because the 737 only has 400,000 parts. I can't even describe what 2.3 million parts would look like. That would be that would be insane to see like all those lined up somewhere. I bet it would take like, I don't know if it would take like the full like Atlantic Ocean. I don't think, no, I don't think it would take like that much, but it would take a significant amount of room, probably like a whole state maybe or something. I don't know, like the state of Rhode Island or something might hold all the 787s, but uh, no poking fun at Rhode Island. Just saying, I'm trying to think of a rep that I can utilize to think about that. But yeah, the Atlantic Ocean was a little uh, facetious there, but nevertheless, pretty cool. And now the windows, just referencing that, that's really cool. The reference, or the uh, 787 Dreamliner has the largest windows of any airplane to date, which is really cool. That is 47 by 28 cent uh, centimeters or 19 inches high, which is, that's that's a quite a bit of room there. That's over a foot, it's like a foot and a half. So you think those 737 windows are small? You are correct because the windows on these aircraft are really cool. And I'm very excited to get on one, hopefully in the near future and see those windows. 
Uh, we also have some green facts. So it's the most eco-friendly airplane for two reasons. It's the most fuel efficient airliner designed to be 20% more efficient than 767. And it's also the world's first major airliner to incorporate primary composite materials in the uh, in the construction of the airframe. This has been a popular trend that we've seen in aviation as of late. And that's a really good point that that uh, article brings up because most airplanes, whether they're general aviation like the Cirrus SR20 or Dreamliners like the 787 are really going from more of those metal materials like aluminum to more composite. The reason that they're doing this is it makes the airplane much more efficient because it's much lighter. And also these composite materials have got much more durable from my understanding over the last probably 20 years or so. So ever since pretty much Boeing and McDonnell Douglas have merged, the composite materials have became much more effective. So the composite pretty much is what they're utilizing uh, for the material on these fuselages, which I don't know if it's more cost friendly at all, but I'm sure that just the infrastructure of it in general is pretty awesome. Okay, so uh, you also have the cabin, uh, the state of the art with all the mood lighting and everything, which is very cool. So that's awesome to get to see. And then 77 weighs close to uh, 29 elephants when it's open. So if you guys don't know, elephants are very large animals. So that is that would be that would be really crazy to see. Like not even not necessarily trying to pick up an open 70 or uh, unfilled 77, but like just seeing like how much that much weight would be with like 29 elephants on like a scale or something that would be pretty crazy so that's awesome and you also had the link which is pretty crazy to see right there as well uh you can actually do match 8.5 that's like uh 650 miles per hour that might be like 600 knots or so so that's very impressive and that gets you across the uh ponds very quickly and you also have smooth ride technology which is really cool so you also have some senses of turbulence and automatic adjusting for wing control surfaces for a smooth ride that's really helpful that's like adjustable trim and that sort of thing on the secondary surface controls I think would be the proper term for that these aircraft are very good at adjusting to their um, conditions they also let the air or they also let the mechanics know what uh, parts need to be changed when they land and that sort of thing so very impressive and the technology in these aircraft is truly incredible and lastly the, uh, the company that actually made this article Avison was actually involved in the development of the 77 Dreamliner they uh, did Honeywell uh, was contracted via Honeywell which is they make fans and all kinds of different programming stuff to help develop the embedded software so that was a really good fun fact lineup about the 787. I hope that you guys found that beneficial. And I definitely learned some things. Uh, 29 elephants is quite a bit. And obviously the composite fuselage, that makes perfect sense. But you obviously don't think about that. Uh, maybe a subconscious thought, but you know, that's not a constant thought probably for most people about these airplanes. But they're truly really nice. And I'm very glad that we got to learn about 787 today. It's a really cool aircraft. And I hope you guys enjoyed my uh, collection of the 787 Dreamliner. So let me know what you think about the 787 in the comments section. I know it's, uh, there's the big debate between the 787 and the A350. So let me know in the comments if you guys like the A350 collection video next time because I would love to see how that compares to the 77 Dreamliner because that's kind of the two newer aircraft in the wide body lane that we're seeing all of those along with some A330 Neos and that sort of thing. But let me know if you guys like to see that. But the 77 collection looks fantastic. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And with that, that will do for today's video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. My name is Red of Aviation. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Take it easy, everybody. Stay safe. Trust the process. Do what you love and love what you do. My name is Red of Aviation. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys soon as Redditor of Aviation is signing off.